Because islands are gardens, every one of them is unique. And like a garden, you have to pay attention to the climate, the rainfall, temperature, when you're deciding what you want to plant. Biohaven floating islands, because of their unique design, are buoyant enough to support most kinds of plants, including trees and bushes and all kinds of shrubs and even flowers. Pretty much anything that the local area will support in a terrestrial garden. Biohaven floating islands are based on natural floating islands, such as this beautiful example taken from Chippewa Flowage in northern Wisconsin. This island is 30 acres in size and supports trees 50 feet high. Its dense riparian edge is a profusion of woody perennials. Biohavens biomimic this feature to provide a natural and sustainable water cleaning capability. Your selection of plants will depend, of course, on your objectives. But whether it's for a specialised application like coastal restoration, to improve waterscape aesthetics, fishery enhancement, to add interest and excitement to a public amenity, water quality enhancement and habitat provision, or to design a logo. It's easy to find suitable plants that will thrive on your island. There are some basic principles which we're going to show you in the following video which apply to all islands. This particular launch will be with turf grass or sod which is great for instantly greening up an island and launching one very quickly. There are variations you can employ too, such as in this island, where you can see the sod has been cut away to reveal planting pockets which have had trees and shrubs planted in them. Usually, after the first growing season, the island has completely naturalized, like the one you see in this photograph in Florida, and this one in Montana. Typically, when an island's delivered, it will look like this, dog not included. The island is made of a plastic mesh which allows water to permeate it. Usually the top four inches will sit above the water line. We've drilled all these holes on the island for wicking channels to help draw the water up. These holes go over halfway through the island in order to uh, get to the water to help the plant life we're going to eventually plant on here. We're going to stuff into these holes rock wool, which is a very absorbent material that will help the water wick up through and get to the roots of the plants. For this launch, we're using rock wool topped with Biomix, which is a peat blend, but there are other materials that can be used as alternatives, such as cocoa peat, which is a type of coir. I'm adding peat to these islands, uh, which will provide additional wicking power for the wire to get up to these plants, but also provide nutrients which the plants love. Uh, in this way, we're biomimicking naturally occurring floating islands that you find in nature. Whatever material you use, it's important that there are no air gaps in the wicking channels that will prevent the water reaching the plant roots. Now some islands are delivered with a jute or koya matting already covering them. These are particularly suitable for planting with plugs. All you have to do is cut a slit in the matting and plant the plug in the wicking hole underneath. You can specify what size wicking holes you want, from 2 inches to 6 inches. So here we are at our launch site, moving the island into place. The island's surface is very rough, so using a tarp helps it to slide easily, it stops it picking up weeds, and it also prevents any damage to the underside of the island. This island's already been prepped with rock wool. We're going to get some uh, topsoil mixed with peat moss. Nice and tight. Actually raises the water level so that the sod will get plenty of water. And in some circumstances you would be planting plants right into these wicking holes? Yeah, it, it depends what, what you're doing. With. So as we smooth this out, is it, is it okay if we put our body weight and, and lean on this? Is it a, strong enough to hold our weight? Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. I mean, you can actually walk on it if you need. Sometimes if you're launching a bigger module, you have to get out on it. You can't always reach it from the side. So yeah, you can get on them, walk on them, or kneel out on them, kneel and work it out. 
So we'll just we'll just layer this over the top of the feed, huh? We'll take what's left in that bag of worm castings and spread it evenly across here, and that'll add minerals to this. So many places that are putting in, you know, beautification projects like parks. It's very important to cover the island completely in order to minimize any UV exposure to the plastic matrix. Many of our islands already have a jute covering when they're delivered to serve this purpose. Growth of everything in the neighborhood. We'll roll it out first and then I think we'll just trim it we'll cut it so we can tell exactly where it needs to be. That may be in there. Nice and tight. So right now we're planting what looks like normal yard grass, Kentucky bluegrass, but there's other options especially. Yes, there are lots of other options. Every region has their own native grasses, and ideally we will plant with the same woody perennials we saw on the natural floating islands. Seeds can be used too. The sod is trimmed so that it reaches only down to the water level. We're going to put in these landscape pins to, to anchor the sod down to the matrix, and we're going to put them in about every three or six inches or so and to make sure that everything's nice and tight. They go in easy, but securely. A lot of times they don't go in easy if you hit a chunk of foam, so that's what the hammers are for. Ah. Well, this thing's ready to go in the water, so we're gonna spin it around a little bit. Take it down the hill. Oh my god. I can see that it's quite buoyant already before yeah. it's even in the water all the way. Well, that was easy enough. Ah, right there. Very buoyant. Let's get her pulled across further. Huh? What if we aren't planting a sod island, but are planting a combination of plugs and plants? The same principles apply. There are wicking channels that need to be packed tight, and the island needs to be completely covered to prevent UV degradation to the plastic matrix. And now I can tell that there's quite a lot of area below this island. A word to the wise, biohavens can be built in any size, any shape, and any buoyancy, but you must let us know in advance if you plan to actually walk on your island so that we know to make it buoyant enough. Now that the island's been launched, it's essential to keep the plants well watered for the first three weeks or until they establish. The plants need to be watered from above and below. Be prepared to check that the island is riding correctly in the water and be prepared to take along a watering can and actually water the plants yourself if you need to. The bottom of the wicking channel should be in contact with the water. If they're too high, you can add rocks temporarily. After this initial period of settling in, the plants will look after themselves and require about the same amount of maintenance as a normal garden would. Let's recap the main points. Biohaven floating islands can be as simple or as complicated as we want to make them. This video barely scratches the surface, so to enter the full world of Biohaven, please visit floatingislandinternational.com. And be sure to check out our excellent licensees websites in the US and elsewhere in the world. You've been listening to Anne Kanye. Thank you for the pleasure of your company.